Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at another super interesting lens from Nawa, it's the 6mm T2.1 ZLD Cine lens for Michael Forford cameras. This completely brand new lens is the world's widest rectilinear lens for Michael Forford camera and the second Michael Forford Cine lens from Lauer. Lauer sent me this pre-production sample last month and pretty much the same time I also received a pre-production sample of the Panasonic GH6 which should have been just released a few days ago by the time I published this review. So I did most of my testing of this Lauer lens using the brand new Panasonic GH6. And if you haven't checked out my Panasonic GH6 review, you should go check it out after watching this review as the GH6 has a lot of new features and big improvements over the GH5 and I have spent a month testing that camera before launch. The first thing I want to mention is, instead of just using the typical cardboard packaging, this Lauer 6mm Cine lens comes in a very nice waterproof hard case. Now, since the custom form inside the case was specially designed for this Lauer 6mm lens, so if you have more than one lens that you want to carry around, then you would probably want to reshape or replace the form inside so you can place more than one lens inside the case. The good thing is, the lens is really quite small, so you should be able to fit easily two or more lenses if you do that. The focal length of this lens is 6mm or 12mm full frame equivalent and it is the widest vetted linear micro four foot lens in the market. Lava also calls it a CLD lens which means the lens should have almost no distortion and we will look at the actual distortion very soon when we look at the image quality. Despite it is such a wide angle lens but look at the size of the lens. It is really, really compact. And while the lens has a very solid full metal construction, the weight of the lens is only about 180 grams. So it is also a pretty lightweight lens. This is an internal focus lens. So the length of the lens won't change when you change the focus distance. As it is a cine lens, both the mechanical focus and iris ring are geared. So you can use it with follow focus systems. However, because the lens is so compact and the iris ring is located right at the back, so if you want to use the follow focus system to control the iris ring, then there is a chance that you may have some clearance issues depends on the follow focus system and the cage that you are using. I don't have a cage for the GH6 yet, but when I tried it on the GH5S with the NITS cage and the follow focus, it works fine. Both the focus ring and the iris ring feel very smooth and very well dampened. The focus scale is at the top of the lens and the focus flow is just a bit over 90 degrees which is quite short for a cine lens. But it is because it is such a wide angle lens so you don't need super precise focus control. A lot of ultra wide angle lenses in the market do not allow you to use a normal screwing filter because of the extruded front element and also the wide angle of field. But this 6mm lower lens has a 58mm filter thread. So this is great if you want to use the ND filter to control the shutter speed or CPL filter to control the refraction when you are filming. The lens comes with a very nice metal lens cap that fits perfectly on the lens. This Lauer 6mm T2.1 Cine lens has a 120 degree angle of view. This is even a bit wider than the Lauer 7.5mm Cine lens which is 110 degree. I don't have the Lauer 7.5mm lens to show you the difference but here is a quick comparison with the typical 12mm kit lens. As you can see the 6mm is a lot wider and there's a huge difference in terms of the field of view. The ultra wide field of view has two advantages. First one is very obvious, it allows you to capture a very wide angle, especially if you need to film in a tight indoor space, then you can use this lens when a normal wide angle lens is not wide enough. The other advantage is, when you pan or tilt the camera, 
you can get some really crazy effect caused by perspective distortion, which can be really cool, but just don't overdo it or else you may make your audience feel dizzy. You can even use this lens for vlogging as well. You don't even have to hold the lens too far away in front because the viewer view is really wide. And because you don't have to fully extend your arm and the lens itself is quite lightweight. So this make it easy to hold the camera for longer and your arm won't feel tired very quickly. And if you set the lens to a smaller aperture like f8 and set the focus distance to something around 0 0.3 meter, then you will have enough depth of field to cover everything from yourself to infinity. So you don't need to readjust the focus at all, no matter you are pointing the camera to yourself or you turn the camera around. The only thing that you need to aware of is because of the really wide angle, you may have some image warping effect near the corner. I do want to emphasize it has nothing to do with the design of this lower lens. It is just a result of using a ultra wide angle lens that is stabilized by the in-body image stabilizer of the camera. Even with the Panasonic GH6, which has a really good IBIS, I still notice the warping effects sometimes. The minimum focus distance of this lower 6mm lens is 0.09m, which is really close, but because of the wide angle of view, the maximum magnification is 0.18t, which is not bad to be honest, so you can get some very nice close-up, but not exactly macro footage. Okay, now let's start look at the image quality. Since this is a cine lens, I'm doing most of the image quality tests by checking the video footage instead of photos. I used a Panasonic GH6 and shot most of the test video in 5.7K resolution. At T2.1, the center sharpness is pretty decent. When I stop down to T2.8, the image sharpness will improve a bit. At T4, the center sharpness becomes excellent. The center sharpness remains pretty much the same until T8, and from T11 onwards, the center start to become a little bit softer because of diffraction. And now let's have a look at the corner. At T2.1, the corner sharpness is acceptable, very usable, but I won't say it's sharp. At T2.8, there is a bit more fine details, and the corner sharpness continue to improve when I stop down to T4. At T5.6, you get the best corner sharpness and the corner sharpness is now excellent. And just like the center, once you stop down to T11, the corner sharpness will start to drop a bit due to diffraction. Because it is an ultra wide angle lens, so even though it is a reasonably fast T2.1 lens, you still can't really dissolve the background much even if you are taking close-up video. So yeah, you won't really get much bokeh at all with this lower 6mm lens. At T2.1, there is some noticeable vignetting with this lower 6mm cine lens. Stop down to T2.8, vignetting reduced quite a bit. However, when I stop down the lens further, vignetting still wouldn't completely go away. Even at T16, I still see a small amount of vignetting. Chromatic aberration is quite well controlled. In most of my test video footage, I don't really see any really obvious chromatic aberration. Even some of the high contrast 5.7K video footage that was shot on the GH6 at T2.1, I still don't really see much color fringing. Lawa called this a COD lens, which means the distortion should be very minimal. And when I test the lens, yes indeed, the distortion is really minimal when I test it with the focus set to infinity. Even at the edge of the frame, there is almost no distortion. If you change the focus to closer distance, then there's a small amount of distortion, but you really have to make the focus really close, like 0 0.15 meter, then you would start to notice some distortion. But for normal shooting, you really shouldn't notice any distortion at all. 
Lens flare is quite well controlled even when I shoot directly into the sun. There is very small amount of lens flare and ghosting. Even at night, when shooting directly into a bright light source, I still see not much lens flare at all. So I was quite surprised. The only lens flare issue I notice is sometimes when there is a really bright light source that is in front of the camera but just outside the frame, then I may get a bit of lens flare and the contrast could also drop a bit as well. So this is something that you need to be a bit careful when filming on a sunny day around midday. If you want to have sun stars in your video, you will need to stop down the lens to around T8. Once you stop down the lens to T11, the sun stars become very sharp and you can see some very nice 14 points sun stars rendered by the lens 7 aperture brace. Another thing that I was really surprised when testing this lower 6mm T2.1 CD lens is the amount of focus briefing. Well, I should say the lack of focus briefing. Look at this test footage when I change the focus from 1 meter to infinity. There is virtually no focus briefing at all. These days, a lot of Michael Forford's lenses from third party manufacturers are basically an APS-C lens with a Michael Forford's mount. While there is nothing really wrong with that, and in some way it means the Michael Forford's version used the better, more centered part of the optics, but I do really appreciate Lauer keep releasing lenses that are specially designed for Michael Forford cameras only and separated from the APS-C lineup. Lauer has done it with their wide angle lens and macro lens and this time with this ultra wide angle cine lens as well. The big advantage for this approach is very obvious with this lens. It is a very small size and very lightweight lens. It is much, much smaller than most other Michael Forford lenses in the market. This 6mm T2.1 lens is not only the widest Michael Forford Cine lens, but also the widest retinilinear Michael Forford lens in the market. So it is a very special lens and it allows filmmakers to create some really unique footage. The really wide of view and a lot of perspective distortion, not to mention you can film in a really, really tight space as well. Optically, it is pretty decent as well. The only issue I noticed is vignetting, which is not severe, but it just doesn't really go away no matter how much I stop down the lens. And I believe it is largely due to the lens very compact design. I think it is a great lens for run and gun style filming. Put it on a small gimbal and you can have a very compact and very smooth setup. So this is really a lens that emphasizes the strongest thing about the Michael Forford system.